What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Happy Sunday, everybody. It's your girl, Mel, your favorite astrologer of Divine Feminine Works. And as always, I hope that this live or this replay finds you in excellent spirits. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. This channel is everything tarot, astrology, spirituality, and manifestation. So if those are the things that you like, if those are the things that you love, if those are the things you want to learn more about, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. So you'll always be notified when I come out with new content. And speaking of content, head over to Instagram and hit that follow button. I've got loads of excellent daily content and I go live every Thursday night at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time for live tower readings by sign. All right, so head over there, hit follow so you don't miss any of that good stuff. All right, all right. So let's let the people over on Twitter know that we're live so maybe they can come and join us. All right, so <laughs> I love hearing that little sound. All right, so this is the weekly astro forecast for the week of June 6th through June 12th, 2022. All right, so June is moving right on along. Hello, PJ. How you doing on this beautiful Sunday? Thanks for joining. All right, so like I said, June is underway. Things are, you know, moving right along. And this is going to be another week that's pretty quiet, astrologically speaking. If you tuned into my weekly astral forecast last week, last week was kind of the same thing. We didn't have any direct aspects. We just had Mercury going direct, Saturn going retrograde. And of course, the moon makes its regular transit through the signs each week. So, I don't know about you, but I'm really definitely feeling this energy because it's a lot calmer. Um, if you compare now to, let's say, April and definitely May, we had eclipses, we had retrogrades starting. So it was a lot going on and the energy tended to be a bit heavy, a bit intense um, and just sort of a little chaotic, too. But June um, is shaping up to be a much quieter month, a lot less chaos, a lot less heavy energy, especially since we're sort of over the eclipse hump. So June is looking pretty good. And if you want to know everything that June has to offer, check out the June monthly astro forecast. And I'll put that link in the description box. Hello. Below. <laughs> I was looking at my comments and I saw a hollow and I was like, hey, <laughs> hey, what's going on, friend? How are you? All right, so let's get into this week. So like I said, again, this is another quiet week, not much going on, but at least this week we have two direct aspects. And I think these aspects are really going to play a major part in sort of our view, not only of ourselves, but of our future. And we sort of get to that by the end of the week, but the beginning of the week, definitely not much going on, all right? So in terms of the moon, so we just had that new moon in Gemini on the uh, 30th of May, right? So that was just last week, last week, Monday. And so now that we've had the new moon, we are making our way towards the full moon, okay? And this is what's known as the waxing phase of the moon. So last week, the moon was in the waxing crescent phase. And that's sort of that phase right outside the new moon where we start realizing the things that we want. We start um, planting seeds in terms of what we want to bring about, what we want to manifest. And so we're continuing that at least at the beginning of the week with the moon in Virgo on Monday. But then as the week progresses, the moon is going to move into the waxing gibbous phase. And the waxing gibbous phase is obviously closer to the full moon. And it's sort of where we gain momentum. We gain momentum in terms of our emotions. We start to feel them a bit more, right? Especially in terms of the things that we want to manifest or birth. And, you know, in terms of our manifestations and our intentions, when the moon is in the waxing gibbous phase, it's like we're we're starting to pick up steam in terms of what we're trying to do. And with the moon moving through each sign, it's almost like a different facet of ourselves becomes illuminated that helps us move forward toward our goals, right? So this week, the moon is going to be moving from Virgo to Sagittarius, all right? And so the nutshell of that sort of transit is that in the beginning of the week when the moon is in Virgo, we're really going to be learning how to be diligent, how to be efficient, and be practical in terms of the things that we want to manifest. When the moon moves into Libra, that is when we start to branch out and we look to others for assistance or for support, all right? And we 
uh, bring other people in to help us get to where we need to go. When the moon moves into Scorpio, this becomes a deeply reflective time. And we start to think about why we want the things that we want. Why do we feel the way that we feel with respect to certain things? Moon and Scorpio is all about asking why and examining our emotions on a very deep level. And then by the time we get to Sagittarius, it's really about expanding our mind, moving beyond what it is that we think that we know and experiencing life so that we can gain wisdom. Okay. So it's a very interesting week in terms of our emotions, but Actually, I shouldn't say that it's interesting because we do this every single month. Most of us do this unconsciously, right? We're not usually aware of where the moon is unless it's a full moon or a new moon, right? Everything in between is sort of like, eh, whatever. But when you really think about it, if you follow the moon's pattern, if you follow the moon's cycle, you can really understand not only yourself, but also understand why you want the things that you want, how to approach the things that you want, who you need to collaborate with in terms of getting what you want. So the moon is very insightful, particularly in terms of the things that we want, the things that we're trying to achieve and understanding ourselves. All right. So yeah. So without further ado, let's get into the week since I've already been discussing it. All right. So on Monday, we have the moon in Virgo. Right. And then we skip over to Wednesday. The moon moves into Libra. Now, it's not until Friday where we start to see some real activity. Right. Because we have Mercury trying Pluto and then we have the sun moving into Scorpio. Then Saturday, we have Venus conjunct Uranus. And then Sunday, we have the moon moving into Sagittarius. So, again, not much going on, but a lot can be gained um, in terms of insight with the astrology from this week. All right. So before we get into the nitty gritty of everything, um, if you find that you just started learning astrology or even if you've started learning astrology and you're a bit confused as to what things are, I developed this thing called the Astrology Basics Cheat Sheet, which is basically the quick and dirty on everything you need to know to start studying astrology and more importantly, learning (laughs) about your natal chart. All right. So it has information on the planets, the houses, the signs and the aspects. These are the four main pillars of astrology. Think of astrology as a table and each of these areas is like a leg of the table all right so it's an 11 page pdf document that gives you again the quick and dirty on everything you need to know to start learning astrology all right and if you're interested in getting this all you have to do is click on the link in the description box below (coughs) excuse me enter in your email address and it's all yours all right (coughs) Excuse me, something just flew into my throat. Oh, goodness. All right. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into the week day by day. All right. So first off on Monday, like I said before, we have the moon in Virgo and you'll see this um, towards the bottom right hand side of your screen. The moon is in brown and it's at zero degrees Virgo. All right. So Virgo is all about perfectionism. It's all about attention to detail. Um, I always find the stories behind the signs can be very interesting. Now, I'm more familiar with like Greek mythology, but, you know, Greek mythology is based on um, Egyptian mythology. But it's interesting that Virgo is a sign is interested or is obsessed with perfection for a very particular reason. Back in the Roman Empire, there were these women called Vestral Virgins, right? And they were required to tend to the fire in Apollo's temple, okay? Apollo is the god of the sun. And they had to do it in a very specific way. And if they didn't, they would be thrown into the fire. (laughs) Hence why Virgo is super duper duper obsessed with perfection. It's almost like if I'm not perfect, then everything is going to go to shit, right? And while that's not necessarily the only characteristic of Virgo, it is one of the main characteristics. But in perfecting, or at least in focusing on perfection, we learn how to become more efficient. We learn how to fine tune what it is that we're doing or what it is that we're trying to achieve, okay? And so with the moon in Virgo being in the waxing crescent phase, when it comes to the things that we want to manifest, when it, wants, when it comes to the things that we want to bring forth into this life, 
Now with the moon in Virgo, it's going to be a, a time to um, perfect these things, either perfect our ideas, right? Or perfect the process by which we do what we do so that um, we can actually have the things that we want, okay? So this is, when the moon is in Virgo, we are geared towards doing things in a very practical way. We're sort of, our, our, focus and even our emotions to a certain extent are sort of put in place where we can really take care of things, be diligent about things, um, address the mundane issues of life. Virgo sort of gets this reputation for being a bit boring because they're really concerned with our day-to-day -day activities and finding efficiency and value and service in those things, right? And so when the moon is in Virgo, that's pretty much what we're focused on, okay? It's about reorganizing. It's about setting things right. And we find emotional satisfaction in solving problems and being of service to others. So particularly if you're trying to manifest something that has to do with others, let's say if you want to put a book out, you want to publish a book, Moon and Virgo helps you focus on how this book can really help other people. What value can it bring to people? Okay. And I feel like that's where our emotions are going to be centered towards the beginning of the week, okay? Virgo is also notorious for health matters. So when the moon is in Virgo, a lot of us may be more cognizant of our health and health issues that we may be dealing with, okay? It's all about our physical body and how we can be more efficient in terms of, so it's like you can't be of service to others if you're lacking in physical health, right? And I feel like moon in Virgo helps us to understand that, right? So we start eating healthier or at least we um, put our attention toward our health. OK, and so that's pretty much where we're going to be at the beginning of the week. This is how we kick the week off. All right. So now let's move on to Wednesday. <clears throat> so on Wednesday, the moon moves into the sign of Libra. And you will see that at the bottom left hand corner of the chart, you'll see the brown moon at zero degrees Libra. OK, so Libra energy is very um, cooperative. It's very partnership oriented because of all the zodiac signs. Libra is the sign that's most concerned with relationships and how we interact with other people. And what I love about the moon in Libra, particularly when it's in the wa the waxing phase of the moon, is that we look to others to help us. We sort of go beyond ourselves and we incorporate other people into what we're trying to do, all right? Because relationships, not just on an emotional level, are they fulfilling just for the sake of it, but emo uh, relationships also add value to our lives, particularly when we're trying to manifest something or put something forth um, or put something forward, right? So this is, it, what's interesting is that moon in Libra is sort of like moon in Virgo in a sense. Problem solving becomes a focus, right? But it's approached in a much different way. Whereas with Virgo, it's problem solving via service and becoming efficient. Problem solving in Libra is all about interaction with others, particularly pleasing interactions with others, okay? It's also about beauty and putting beautiful things in our environment. And what I love about Libra, you know, the moon in Libra transit, especially in this phase of the moon, is that it's all about finding the beauty in what we're trying to do. A lot of times, especially when the moon is in Virgo, we can become very bogged down by details. This is what we need to do. This is what we need to have. It's sort of like crafting a plan of action, right? And then moon gets to Libra and it's really about stopping and smelling the roses, appreciating how far you've come in your journey and sharing that with other people, okay? So this is all about diplomacy. This is all about, again, interacting with people. But the thing with Libra is that Libra is notorious for being indecisive. While Libra can see both sides of a situation, a lot of times Libra is sort of straddling the fence, not really making any moves because of indecisiveness. Libra can also have a propensity towards people pleasing. So you really have to check yourself to understand why you're doing what you're doing. So like I said before, Libra is all about incorporating people into what you're doing. But are you doing what you're doing for the sake of other people? Are there is their input, is their opinion about what you're doing more valuable than your personal reason for doing it? Like you definitely have to examine that when the moon is in Libra, okay? So anything related to beauty, anything that involves teamwork is usually the focus when the moon is in Libra, okay? So again, even if you don't find that you're being exceptionally uh, social or anything like that, you really want to just be appreciative of how far you've come, 
find the beauty in whatever you're doing and just share that with other people. I think that's one of the best ways to make use of the moon in Libra transit. All right. And again, that's going down on Wednesday. All right. So we get to Friday and Friday is when we have a little bit of movement because we have our first direct transit of the week. All right. And so we have Mercury trine Pluto. Mercury is currently still in Taurus. You'll see that at the top right of your screen. It's at 28 degrees, that little purple looking guy. <laughs> and it's going to be trying to Pluto, which is at the very bottom of the screen in Maroon, which is at 28 degrees Capricorn. And then that same day, we have the moon moving into Scorpio. You'll see that at the far left of the chart with the moon in brown at zero degrees Scorpio. All right, so let's get into it. Now, we actually just had Mercury trine Pluto, I believe, on May 25th. And we have them sort of back to back because of the transit of Mercury, right? Mercury was retrograde. So as a matter of fact, it actually passed over. We actually experienced this transit. This is the third time we're experiencing it, experiencing it. Because when Mercury was first direct, it hit this transit. Then when it was retrograde, it hit that transit. Now that it's going direct, it's hitting this transit again. And what I love about transits that become activated several times, it's almost like when you hit something on the road with your car and you end up like backing over it and then going forward and then backing over it. I mean, I know that's a little grim and morbid, but you get so many passes over it, right? And in astrology, it's like that becomes a very emphasized point. It's like an exclamation point on the theme that that transit represents or that aspect represents, I should say. And Mercury trine Pluto is a harmonious aspect, okay, because we're talking about a trine. And if you're not so sure what a trine means or what an aspect is or even what a transit is, not only should you, should you download the Astrology Basics Cheat Sheet, but in the link in the description box below, I'm also going to have my article on planetary aspects, okay? And it explains all of the aspects, what they mean, when they occur, all of that stuff. So check the link in the description box and uh, read all about it, all right? So a trine is a harmonious aspect, meaning that things just flow together harmoniously. There's never any effort that has to be exerted when you're talking about a trine. Um, and in, when you think about the trine as a symbol, it's a triangle, right? And that usually represents, depending on your level of spirituality or what religion you came from, it's like the Holy Trinity, right? It's like the symbol of completion, <laughs> completion, okay? And everything just flows automatically. And so Mercury trine Pluto is a very powerful transit because it involves Pluto. Pluto is a planet of intensity. It's a planet of transformation. And when you put it together with Mercury in this harmonious trine, the long and short of it is that ideas and communication can be transformative in your life, okay? So Mercury is in Taurus, which is an Earth sign. Pluto is in Capricorn, which is also an Earth sign. So with these two planets coming together in this way, whatever transformation occurs is extremely, um, it's very tangible, meaning that you're gonna see it and feel it in your everyday life. It's gonna be something extremely real, okay? And again, because we've had this pass over with this transit, again, this is the third time we're having this. It's almost like the universe is really stressing that this is something that's extremely important and a theme that's going to be playing out in your life repeatedly, okay? So with this transit, one of the great things I like about it is that if you need a favor, if you need to persuade somebody, like this would be the time to do it because words have so much weight. Ideas have so much weight, so much so that they can transform your life. It's like there's, um, I believe, I'm not sure if it's in the Bible, don't quote me, but I know this phrase, there's life and death in the power of the tongue, right? That is exactly the characteristic of Mercury trine Pluto. Again, everything is super potent. Your brain is very powerful, so if you need to research anything, if you need to learn a new skill, particularly a skill that can really change your life, because these two planets are in earth signs, if you need to change your job, if you need to add more value to your bottom line, if you need your business to start making more money, researching things that do that, thinking of a master plan to do that will really take hold, okay? So again, this is super powerful transit. 
This is great for things like sales, debating, negotiating, um, in business, anything having to do with major purchases. So let's say you're trying to buy a house or a car, particularly again, because both of these planets are in earth signs. You can really persuade the salesman or whomever to give you a much favorable deal because of the presence of this transit, okay? But by and large, one of the most important ways that this transit can affect us is that people, and specifically the things they say to us or impart upon us, can really deeply affect us, okay? This is sort of like learning from a teacher who just sparks something within you that can change your life. This is being on a spiritual journey and listening to like a guru or something like that who gives you that last piece of the puzzle that just puts everything together. It's really a powerful transit to enhance yourself for personal development, for learning about yourself, for self-analysis. Like I can't go on more about how important and how potent this particular transit is, okay? Um, interestingly enough, <laughs> it also bodes well for criminal activity, all right? Because Pluto is associated with the underworld, sort of the underbelly of our society. And in terms of Mercury trine Pluto, this is understanding the the mechanisms of the criminal world. So you'll see criminal activity, if it doesn't go up, I think that in the next couple of months, you're going to hear about a lot of people who committed crimes at this time because, I don't know, the transit somehow just fosters that for some reason. Again, it's all about research, investigation. If you're trying to get to the bottom of something to learn the truth about something or learn why something works the way that it does, this is the transit for you. Perfect for research and investigation. Um. Pluto rules psychology, it rules the why behind the things that we do. And with the moon in Scorpio on the same day, this is a perfect day for self-reflection and understanding why you do what you do, why you want what you want, etc. A lot can be gained in terms of personal insight on Friday and into the weekend. So even though obviously it's the weekend and you know everyone wants to rock out and have fun and be social. I think it really serves us to at least spend a little bit of quiet time in self-reflection because a lot of insight can be gained from just doing that. All right. So, and then we have the moon going to Scorpio, which I mentioned before, which is all about um, deep emotions. It can also be about ridding ourselves of what we no longer need. So with the moon in the waxing gibbous phase, (laughs) I feel like I have to keep remembering that because it feels so hard to say for some reason. With the moon being in the waxing gibbous phase, like I said before, we're gaining momentum towards our manifestations, right? And with the moon in Scorpio, it's really about taking stock of what you don't need that can sort of weigh you down and be an obstacle to getting what you want or getting to where you need to go. So if you've noticed that maybe you have a negative self-talk or maybe you procrastinate a lot. You know, any sort of those habits that really prevent us from being our best selves. Moon and Scorpio is the best time to address those things and release them. Moon and Scorpio also tends to be a really emotional time because it's all about our deeply seated emotions and our subconscious. So the beginning of the weekend may be a bit emotional. It may be a little emotionally triggering. But the best thing about triggers is that it puts your attention where it needs to be so that you can address that particular emotion or that particular situation, all right? And again, with that Mercury, trying Pluto transit, Friday is a great day for self-reflection and some inner work, maybe even some shadow work too. All right, so that's Friday. Interesting day. And then on Saturday, we have Venus conjunct Uranus in Taurus, all right? And so if you look at Taurus, which is towards the upper right-hand part of the screen, you'll see the green Venus symbol at 16 degrees, and then that blue thing next to it is Uranus, which is also at 16 degrees, all right? And to be honest, Venus conjunct Uranus is actually one of my favorite transits. One of the things that I feel that I don't hear an, a lot of people talk enough about is sort of the origin of Uranus and what Uranus typically represents. Um, most astrologers will just say that, okay, Uranus is the planet of rebellion. It's the planet of surprise, right? It's things happening that aren't within our control. That is because Uranus represents fate. It actually represents God, Um 
in Greek mythology, um, the sky itself was known as God and was also uh, called, it wasn't called Uranus. I forgot the name, but it, Uranus is representative of God and divine will. That's why things happen. Anything happening with Uranus is a surprise because it's all about fate. It's all about destiny. It's all about divine will and the hand of God, right? And so when you put Venus together with Uranus, it's like the hand of God is at work in terms of our uh, relationships, in terms of our money, in terms of things that we value. Now, if you're not someone who likes surprises, anything involving Uranus can be a little jarring, right? Because again, it's things happening that aren't within our control. And if we're talking about relationships, if we're talking about money, those are two areas of life that we tend to be very sensitive about, right? Any sort of unanticipated shakeups can really shake us up, right? But Conjunctions can be very powerful because it's the mixing of the two planetary energies together, right? And being in Taurus, Taurus being a sign that's symbolized by the bull is sort of about being stubborn and being very grounded. And so Venus conjunct Uranus in Taurus is really going to shake us up. It's going to shake up our love life. It's going to shake up our finances. It's going to shake up the things that we value and it's going to deviate from what we're used to. It's going to deviate from the norm, okay? So if you've been operating in a certain way, even if it's just a mindset, it doesn't have to be necessarily how you outwardly operate. But if your mindset about love, if your mindset about money, even if your mindset about equality, fairness, justice, things of that nature have been sort of stuck in the mud, Venus conjunct Uranus is going to shake that up. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Um, sometimes we need to shake up for change, particularly change in the right direction if we haven't been going in the right direction before. So it's really about experiencing new things. And that's why I titled this particular weekly forecast, Surprising Encounters, because Venus is all about relationships, right? It's how we interact with other people. And Uranus being the planet of surprise, many of us could find ourselves striking up a conversation with a stranger that ends up being our friend or meeting someone randomly by accident and then, you know, interacting with them, it sort of takes us out of our comfort zone and allows us to see a different part of life, right? And that's, I personally love that. But again, if you're someone who is averse to surprises, then it might be a little jarring, okay? But it also brings excitement. Like it doesn't have to be this whole transformative experience if things have if you've just been experiencing a lull particularly when it comes to money or love I feel like Venus conjunct Uranus is just going to shake things up and make things exciting again okay but what it also does in an interesting way is that it increases our desire for stimulation again this is sort of that urge to want to feel something exciting or that urge to get out of the rut that we're in okay so some of us may be like forcing ourselves to do something different. So it may not even be that it's the hand of God that's coming down on you and, and shaking things up. It could be your desire to want to experience something new. But the thing to remember with this transit is that wanting something new and straying from the tried and true can be absolutely amazing, but it could also really hurt what you've built. So you really have to keep that in mind. Let me give you an example of a relationship, right? Let's say you've been in a relationship with a person and you're well past the honeymoon phase and you're in the, you know, sort of blah phase. Things are just regular. You have your regular routine. Things are moving right along, but you start to feel this itch, right? You're like, yo, let's do something different. We used to do this and we don't do that anymore. Or you may not even discuss this with your partner. You may feel like you want to experience something new. So typically this particular transit can induce things like cheating. <laughs> it can induce things like, um, you know, stepping out, cheating or trying something new, especially sexually, you know. And so if you or your partner aren't really on the same page, this could sort of hurt what you've already built. OK, so that's really the reason why I brought up this example. So you want to be um, cognizant of how you're seeking enjoyment and what that may mean for what you've already built. All right. Um, Uranus is also about rebellion. So this may find that you leave your relationship or you leave a certain job, even if we're talking about money again, because you're sort of going after that. You're following that urge for excitement and something new. Okay. 
Now, if you're single and you're really looking to mingle and be out there, because of the presence of Uranus, internet dating may be your thing. Um, Online dating, dating apps, you may want to give it a try because, again, you may have that surprising encounter that may really turn into something that you really want. Now, if you're averse to internet dating and all of that stuff, you know, you may actually want to give it a try because, again, it's all about surprises. It's all about deviating from the norm, okay? So that may be where you find your prince or princess charming, okay? Let's see what else we have. Okay, so in terms of money, Venus conjunct Uranus could be a windfall of money, a surprising amount of money that just falls into your lap. And again, it's nothing that you have to do to get it, right? Because this is sort of the hand of God at work. But at the same token, it could also be a downfall of money. So this could be a surprising bill coming up, a surprising expense, okay? Um, Being that these two planets are conjunct in Taurus and Taurus rules like tangible things, things that you can touch, feel, taste, smell, hear, etc., Um, you know, you may have to buy something in particular, buy a particular product or product may just fall into your lap. It could go either way with Uranus. Again, it's the planet of surprises. What's also, and this is sort of the last point of this transit is that your creativity may really come online. Okay. Um, tapping into your creative talents may have a very surprising, uh, effect on your money, or maybe even on your relationships, right? Because again, Venus represents creativity, among other things, and Venus being the planet of surprise, and also intuition. So when it comes to your creativity, when it comes to expressing yourself, you'll also want to follow your intuition, because that's right in line with the energies of this transit. And again, it could end up being a very pleasant surprise for you and others, okay? And last but not least, I mean, I know I think I just said that before, but really last but not least, (laughs) this could be just surprises coming your way. And Venus in Taurus, in its home sign of Taurus, um, rules gifts, right? So this could be a gift of jewelry. This could be compliments on your look. This could be, um, you know, anything tangible that's beautiful and that has some sort of value could be bestowed upon you for no reason. Okay. So stay open and receptive because I feel like over the weekend, a lot can happen. And just because it's surprising and unexpected doesn't mean that it's necessarily a bad thing. All right. And then finally, we get to Sunday. And on Sunday, we have the moon going into the sign of Sagittarius. And you'll see that at the left hand of the screen, the brown moon at zero degrees Sagittarius. All right. So Sagittarius is all about embarking upon a new adventure. It's about broadening your horizons and expanding your mind, okay? And when the moon is in Sagittarius, our emotions can be a bit larger than life. They can be very inflated, okay? But we also tend to be more optimistic, more upbeat, we're able to see the larger picture of things. And with the moon being in the waxing phase, like we're making our way towards the manifestation of our intentions, this is being able to see the bigger picture of things. So when the moon was in Scorpio, we understood why we're doing what we're doing. And now that we understand that, the moon in Sagittarius allows us to be optimistic and upbeat about it. Uh, Sagittarius is also about having faith, right? So even if you're putting in work towards your manifestations, Sagittarius allows you to still step out on faith and see the bigger picture and keep moving along towards the completion of your goals, okay? Again, it's also about adventure. It's about new experiences. And it's sort of this need, we're going to feel this need to expand and to experience things. Sagittarius rules knowledge, but knowledge gained through experience. So it's more about wisdom, okay? And so I feel like instinctively, a lot of us are going to feel like doing that, whether it's doing something that's outside of our comfort zone or learning something at a higher level. I think that come the weekend, particularly on Sunday, you're going to want to expand your mind and broaden your horizons. Um, Sagittarius can also be a bit over the top, right? So the moon in Sagittarius can make you like over promise and under deliver, overstate things, or even overdoing it, right? Remember I said Sagittarius is all about faith. 
And so being faithful and optimistic is great. But if you sort of feel like you need to do the most, then you're really not exercising faith, right? Because faith is, you know, uh, it's loyalty in the unseen, right? And so if you feel like you have to do the most, then you're not really faithful to that. So be mindful of doing a lot, overworking yourself, overstating things, because that can be a definite characteristic of moon in Sagittarius, okay? It's also about not necessarily having a plan. I feel like back when the moon is in Virgo, that's when you sort of craft a plan and you're concerned about the details. And moon in Sagittarius is sort of the opposite of that. We're able to see the bigger picture. We're able to see the forest for the trees, we're also able to just deviate from the plan a little bit and just follow our intuition. Again, Sagittarius rules faith. So it's faith in the unseen. So you don't have to necessarily have every single step planned out. Follow the map, uh, you know, religiously. Sometimes you find things in the weirdest places or off the beaten path, right? Because you were meant to. Sometimes we're meant to deviate from our well-set plans and just wing it. And I feel like Sagittarius, particularly the moon in Sagittarius, is going to allow us to do just that, all right? So again, this week has been pretty low-key. It's not a lot going on, but that's the beauty of life, right? You have some weeks that's going to be a lot of stuff, a lot going on, a lot of heavy and intense energy. Then have other weeks where it's just, you know, not so much of a focus on a lot of things. And this week is definitely going to be one of those weeks. All right. So with that, I conclude this weekly Astro forecast. I hope that you were able to get some valuable information and information that can really help you get through the week well. Thank you so much for joining me. I know that you could be doing anything else on a Sunday. And the fact that you came here and you've been rocking out with me means the world to me. So thank you so much. I wish you guys a wonderful week ahead. And of course, I'll see you next week. Take care.